Okay, warning, this is full spoilers for Vampire Night. So if you're thinking of reading Vampire Night and you haven't read Vampire Night yet, and I know some of you are gonna come out with your claws with Vampire Night, if you've seen the anime, you know that it is pretty out there, but I have been reading Vampire Night now for two years. And when I hit volume nine, was it volume nine or volume 10? One of those. I literally threw the book. So I was watching the anime and I didn't finish the anime. So I didn't get to the part that everybody just jumps on and hates right away. And what that part is, is her finding out that she is in love with her brother. He's not actually her brother, by the way. And you find that out in the manga. So when you watch the anime, at first you're like, ooh, a little bit gothic. It's definitely got that 90s-esque vibe that reminds me of like, um, Nana or um, even Oran uh, host, High School Host Club, a little bit tired now, um, has kind of this vintage vibe, not like the vaporwave aesthetic of Sailor Moon, but kind of like this 90s kind of grungy moment. I would say that uh, Rosario Vampire and like Pokemon Indigo League. So I actually really like anime from this time, like Inuyasha. There's something about the quality that really just makes it look like a, uh, an animated color, full color manga instead of this like hyper digit digitized anime that we that we have available to us now. I'm really glad that I stretched out volumes one to 19 over two years because it's such an incredible story. And I had a post that went kind of semi-viral. I think got like 30,000 or maybe more. And a lot of people were really upset that I was reading this. And a lot of people were like, Vampire Night is my, my guilty pleasure, my guilty pleasure. But it's funny, people who are fans of Game of Thrones, they don't say that Game of Thrones is their guilty pleasure. They just look at the context of it and and take it for what it is. And of course, there are some themes. And this video is for Vampire Night fans. So I want to talk to you guys. This is why I made this video today. It's, it's just a freestyle video to talk about the title of this manga and finally realizing why it's called Vampire Night. I I was just thinking like Vampire Night because there's the night class and because I stretched it out over two years I I wasn't like following these characters like you know volume to volume to volume to volume. I kind of reread volume seven, eight, nine, and 10, like over and over a few times. And then I just powered right through. And of course, there are times where you kind of speed through some things and uh, you're reading really, you're reading really late at night and you're a little bit tired. I did not expect the ending at all. I have to say that I thought this manga was about, manga, manga was about her and as much as I adore and I love Yuki, she's so cute and she's so sweet. I always, 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 always loved Kaname. And he's the real star of the manga, isn't he? This manga is really his story. But it, it was like low-key not presented that way at all. It was totally Yuki's story. And, and she is, she does get the most um, screen time. And it is mostly... Like there's a lot of first person viewpoints from her view. I felt like zero. I was just like, I don't know. I kind of just, he kind of ticked me off. 
I just felt like he was so depressed all the time. And I knew his story was sad, but he wasn't cool to me. He wasn't cool to me. And a couple people in my comment section with the video, you know, and I had Vampire Night in it and a bunch of people were like, oh, I love Zero, I love Zero. And the anime, I didn't really love Zero, but past volume 11, not even, not even. It isn't until he, now this is so tragic, but it isn't until his brother, his brother passes. And then I, I felt as if after that point, even though he was still upset and still brooding and still kind of depressed and still very melancholic, and he's just melancholic the entire time. I just feel like he really came into his purpose at that time. And he came to terms with the reality that he was living in as a level E. And he became stronger and stronger. And I don't know, he just got like cooler, sexier or something. But even in the end, <laughs> you get to volume. Did you guys go through this? Who has finished Vampire Night? 718, 1718, now 19. I just felt like I was going through a roller coaster of emotions from 16, 17, 18. And I, I, I didn't really know where it was going and I was really confused. And it, honestly, I felt this is my only tidbit of feedback that it's not even a thing and I wouldn't change a single thing. Actually, I take that back. If we could have just squeezed in between 15 and 19, four more volumes, just four. And I know that it's a lot of, <laughs> that would be a lot of content, but if we could have had even just two years past where she was hidden away for two years, and in that two years, just a little bit more content because after she became or realized she was a pure blood princess, I felt like there wasn't enough experiences between her and Kaname for me to like rebond with them. Although maybe if I reread from one to 19 all the way through, obviously there's many, many encounters between volumes one and nine where she comes in she comes in close encounter with Kaname. So if I was reading it like consecutively book to book, then maybe I would have felt, I just felt like I needed more of a bond between them and maybe I do need to go back and read. And I, and I will. This is one of those mangas and this is why I'm making a video about this manga that I am going to reread over and over and over and over and over again. And I don't care if anybody wants to poop on me about it. It is an incredible story and I cried my eyes out. I'm not like fully full spoiling it because just in case anybody's watching this that hasn't hasn't read Vampire Night or um, hasn't watched the anime, finally understood this title of this manga and it's absolutely brilliant. I felt as if all of the characters got exactly the amount of time that they needed for me to be involved with them. Although I felt like a little disconnected from Sarah Shirabuki. She just kind of like came up out of nowhere and I'm wondering, is there more to her story? I feel like with this storyline and these characters, there could be branches and branches of stories off of all of the characters and I would read them all. I was very touched by Yuki's ability to embrace herself as a pureblood. And I wasn't shocked when she elegantly realized herself and was able to act upon her powers and was able to utilize her powers to help. Throughout the entire series from one to 19, I really felt that I understood how she was feeling in this love triangle between her, Kaname, and Zero. And I have to say, they, and it kind of just like, it jumps, it jumps out at you, but they're quite the thruple. They're totally a thruple. So, you know, I, was, I think somebody did say in the comment section, would you ship Kaname and Zero? And 
I thought about it and I was like, mm, no, I don't think so. But no, no, I still don't. I think they're, they're just really masked to me. They're both just really masked to me, but I think they both could be quite feminine as well. And, and that's what I do love about this um, manga is, is all of the characters are, I would say quite femininely drawn. I love the long wispy hair that everyone has. I love the themes. I felt like everything was really cohesive. Although there were times where I maybe was a little bit confused on what was going on, I could go back and reread, you know, the bubbles and, and, and understand what was going on. And I felt like there was just amount, the right amount of drama, the right amount of action, the right amount of romance. And she, you know, it is shoujo and she is a teenage girl technically. And I felt like, yeah, I'm living, I'm totally in the story of a teenage girl who's a, who lives a life as a human and then as a vampire. And there's a lot of vampire stuff out there. I mean, I watched all the Twilight movies. I, I, I read the books and um, I think there's a, a really big popularity for vampire stuff out there, but this is the best piece of fiction I've read ever on vampires. And I watched Interview with the Vampire over and over and over and over and over. And they really do emphasize the heartbreak that vampires have in living forever. And purebloods live like, they can live eternally, eternally. Like regular vampires, you can you can definitely kill, but purebloods you can't. And so the weight that Kaname has been living with for having lived so long and I just want to know more about him. So um, I, I haven't read Memories. Please don't um, spoil anything for Memories in the comment section. I'm very curious. I, I have read a little bit about it online, so I have a little bit of an idea of what's going to happen. But um, I do want to see how everything unfolds. And I I was um I was shocked at the end. I cried like a baby. But I do wish that there was just a little more. And I don't know what I'm going to get in Memories, but. I will never sell this series, so if you're thinking of reading the series, I do rate it a 10 out of 10. If you like shoujo, if you like romance, and if you're not triggered by um, some taboo themes. And yeah, it's just reaching out to the online world to see where my vampire fans are at. Who is, who, who are you? Are you team Kaname? Are you team Zero? And why? And are there any side characters that you wish you could learn a little bit more of? I actually was really taken to, um, what was her name again? It was, she was earlier in Hiyo Shizuka. I really came to like her. I felt like they gave her a lot of backstory in the anime and the manga. See, that's how I didn't feel about Shir Shiraguki Sara. I wish that she got a little bit more backstory. And I think a little bit of backstory, mm, no, nah, I was gonna say on the twins, but Wakaba, her best friend. I, I think that I, I would love a little bit more on her too. And if I may, because I am a Yuri fan, I feel like it would be going way too all over the place if there was like a little bit of romance between her and Yuki. However, I did delightfully enjoy the one scene where she tries to like scare her and she's like, aren't you scared of me? And she like kind of climbs on top of her. And I did enjoy that scene. And she's like, I'm not scared of you. And I thought that was really cute. And she kind of popped out of nowhere too for me. I didn't really realize how much I would uh, be attached to her and like really enjoy seeing her when she came up. But I love her haircut and her like cute little face, her big eyes. I don't know. I think they mean to make um, Rima annoying-ish. <laughs> I find her a little bit annoying, but um, I do like her character. And um, I think like little side stories between the little extra romances would be really lovely too. So I do know that there is uh, a novel, but I don't know if it's been translated into English. I have to research that. I know there's an art book as well. So I am going to be you know, clicking away and looking for all the Vampire Night things. If you know about all the Vampire Night things, please share with me in the comments below. And let's talk about Vampire Night. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.